So um, thanks, John, and uh, thanks for having me. Um, I'd like to start out by saying that I come here as a user of all the cool stuff that you guys have been showing, not as a developer. Um, but somehow I'm still allowed to present here. Um, so consider my talk a big thank you to all of you um, who've made my work possible. Um, so first I'd like to um, put a plug in for Janilia. Um, so we're a neuroscience institute um, entirely funded by HHMI. And um, it's a beautiful location in Virginia. Um, it's, the architecture is great, built right into a hill. Um, so I encourage you to come and visit us. We're always um, looking for more uh, programming talent. Um, and uh, if you come in the winter, you might get stuck with us for a bit longer. Um, so what is segmentation? Um, segmentation um, means dividing an image into meaningful, meaningful regions or segments. Um, so the same way that you have you know, a line that can be divided into segments. So you do that in 2D, it's an image. And then there's also 3D images and so on. Um, and so you know, if you've seen Terminator, you've seen segmentation, um, multiple instances of it. Um, so in neuroscience, uh, you can think of neurons as um, segments in a 3D image. So what you're seeing here is um, a big volume of serial sections of electron microscope microscopy, um, and within it are Im embedded neurons. Um, so as you, you know, then you see the segments within that, that image as neurons coming in from the um, previous part of the, of the volume. Um, yeah, so this is part of the FLY um, visual processing system. Um, the, the lamina is the previous stage. It, it occurs in stages, much like in uh, neurocortex. And then this is part of the medulla. Um, and to save you a quick of mental math, that's about 190 gigs um, UNT data, um, you know, before we've done any processing to it. Um, yeah, and now you're going to see, basically, from these segments, there's a whole bunch of other segments that are the neurons immediately downstream from the neurons coming in from the lamina. And um, it, it, go, it actually goes on, but I'm going to stop it here. Um, and you know, the goal is to reconstruct from the images all the segments and all the connections and figure out how the fly visual system works. Um, so that's just the motivation. Um, the, one of the common strategies for um, segmentation is to first do an over-segmentation and then merge. Um, so here's you know, a very, very small fraction of that volume that you saw. Well, it's a different volume, but same thing. Um, and you can see you know, there's boundaries between cells. Each of those circles that you see is, is part of a cell. And uh, inside of cells, you also have some structure, which are mitochondria and so on, uh, which make the segmentation problem a challenge. Um, so do I have a cursor? Yes, I do. So you can see how here it might be a problem to segment because you can't, you know, locally you don't have much information and it looks, you know, this boundary looks very much like the stuff inside of here. Um, but anyway, f from this image we um, train a, a classifier on the image that gives us the probability of being a boundary. And again, you can see that um, bloody cursor. I can't see. The, oh, there it is. Um, you can see that the classifier had trouble here. Um, from this, you do an over-segmentation. This is using the output from the watershed algorithm. Um, and you can see that there's no merges, but there's also a lot of noise. Um, and the goal is then to merge all of that into a segmentation of the image. Um, so you know, this is sort of the, the input and output of uh, what I'm trying to do. Um, so one of the most common strategies for agglomeration is mean agglomeration. So given a probability map, which is on the left, um, you do the over-segmentation on the right. So all of, all of this is one cell here. Um, and uh, you know, over here, it's vastly over-segmented. So what you want to do is you want to start merging these segments uh, one by one. And, um, 
the, the thing with mean agglomeration is that as you merge these two segments, the boundary between the new segment and this other one becomes longer. And generally, as you merge segments, the boundaries become longer, and which gives you a better estimate of the mean, which means that the mean is going to do pretty well. Um, but mean agglomeration is just one of a family uh, of algorithms called agglomerative segmentation. Um, so, um, you know, so you have a really zoomed in region here. From that, you can build a graph. So, da -da -da. so you have these three segments, which are all connected to each other. So those are three nodes. So each node is a segment, and an edge is, um, you know, a boundary between a segment. And then this extra segment is over here, and it's only connected to the one thing. Um, and so then we can drop the original map. So we have a graph, and then we have any function. You know, the mean is just one, one such function where you take the graph, um, two nodes, and then you turn it into a real number. Um, that gives you a priority of what is the, the thing that you want to merge next. Um, and the nice thing about this, this type of algorithm is that it's scalable. You could uh, conceivably run it in uh, Google Preggle because, um, you know, Every node just needs to be aware of its own neighborhood and the current threshold at which things are merging. Um, so, you know, so again, the mean is one of these, um, but why not median or why not something else? So the, the hypothesis that we started out with was maybe we can, we can learn this. We can learn the best function uh, with which to agglomerate. Um, so um, the steps to learning. Um, Basically, I did this decomposition. So first, you have this feature map, which takes the two nodes and gives you some feature set, uh, which is a big set of numbers. Um, and then you can just train a classifier, um, which takes that and maps it into a real number. Um, and so Python is really good for that. Um, in particular, then you want to compose these two things together. And again, Python can just take two functions and return you a, a, a new function uh, very easily. Um, so then I have this next title, which is, um, OK, so the, the reason the mean, as I said, is better is that um, as you start agglomerating, your boundaries get longer and your mean gets improving. Um, and basically, you're guaranteed that your estimates are getting better and better and better as you agglomerate. Uh, when you learn, this is no longer the case, because once, if you learn, say, on every edge of a graph, uh, once you merge, your new edge has a completely different set of properties because it's a much bigger segment um, that you've never seen before. Um, and so you're not guaranteed that you're going to do better and better as time goes on. And in fact, you, you don't uh, do better and better. Um, and so I, we came up with this, um, this way of, of learning it. So suppose you have here um, four segments. Um, and the red line refers to what the ground truth segmentation uh, should be. And um, you know, everything else is over segmentation. So now we're going to start with some initial guess as to what we should do. Um, and it tells us, let's try to merge one and three. But we have the ground truth, so we say, no, we shouldn't merge that. So we, we compute the features on that edge, and we label it as uh, don't merge. Um, then we try another edge, two, three, say. So now we compute the features, we merge it. We, we say that it's a merge, so it's a different label. You see there, minus one. Um, but then we merge it. And so notice that now you have a new segment, 2, 4, that you couldn't have before, um, and that has properties um, of bigger agglomerations. Um, so again, that gives you another label. Then you try something else. And then that gives you a new label, and you merge it, and you end up with the, the truth. Um, and you've learned basically every label on that path. And you might as well learn that one as well. Um, and then now you have a new agglomeration function, and you can do this again over. And so you're getting closer and closer to a perfect agglomeration. Um, so that's this. So now you start over. Um, and you can do this many times. Um, so then this is sort of our evaluation metrics. Um, we use the variation of information. I don't have time to get into it now. But um, the point of it is, and I'm running way behind. Um, so you want to be closer to the bottom left. And conceptually, that little cross that you see near the bottom left is um, as good as you can do. because So the ground truth and the 
um, over segmentation don't exactly match. Um, so that's as good as you could do. Um, and if you do a flat learning, you get the blue line, which is still better than the mean, um, but it's not as good as the agglomeration. And you have standard errors of the mean on top of these things. So um, statistically significantly better is not much better. Um, but in one aspect, it's, it's a lot better, actually. And so here I plot uh, the total VI, which is the sum of the two axes earlier, um, against uh, the threshold that you merge to. And so if your probability estimates from your classifier are really good, then you expect that um, you're going to you know, keep improving until 0 0.5 and then start doing worse. Because until 0 0.5, most of your you know, more edges are, are true merges than uh, false merges. Um, and afterwards is the reverse, so you expect to be going down and then up. Um, and you see that with the flat learning, that's very far from true. Um, but with the agglomerate, agglomerative, uh, agglomerative active learning, um, we get um, essentially right to that point. Um, and this is very important uh, in our later stages when we're doing proofreading. Um, so, you know, our, our accuracies are not nowhere near enough to do those gigantic volumes, so we get lots of errors and we have human proofreaders go and fix them. And you want to know where to prioritize that proofreading effort. Um, and so if you have a good probability estimate, you can take um, proofreaders to the most uncertain regions. Um, okay. And uh, the other thing is that um, thanks to NumPy and all of its uh, nice uh, ND uh, support, um, I coded everything in ND, and I don't have to show you how to segment uh, electron microscopy uh, volume. I can instead show you how to segment this little critter, um, which is much nicer. Um, and so this thing is from the Berkeley segmentation uh, data set. Um, and you can see that it's a challenging one um, just because it's so fuzzy. Um, and so you see on the bottom right that the probability map um, doesn't do very well at all. And with the bad probability map, you're not going to get good segmentation from uh, mean agglomeration. Um, so let's try and segment this guy with uh, the region learning. Um, so I'm going to show you. So on the left is, so the, right now the two images are identical. They're the over segmentation. On the left, uh, we're going to do the segmentation based on the agglomerative classifier. And on the right is the one based on the uh, flat, flat graph uh, classifier. It was only trained on the initial node set. Um, so then we start. So you can see that the regions are growing. And very quickly, you can start to see that there's a key difference in the left one, right? So it can start to grow really big regions. Um, and you, the guy is very surprised about this. Um, so the, the agglomeration on the right, once it starts getting big regions, it, the classifier gets confused. It doesn't know what to do with them. So it starts focusing its effort on other small pairs. Um, whereas the one on the left, it, it's been trained to uh, do agglomerative learning. And so you can see that it's growing regions um, to much bigger sizes um, very quickly. And so at the end, the one on the right basically fails to segment the, um, the porcupine, but um, our algorithm could do it. Um, so even though it was a subtle difference in the previous slide, um, you can see that um, in real, real use cases, it actually makes a big difference. Um, and so this is another way to look at this data. Um, so you know, for every merge on each of the algorithms, I plot the probability of the uh, merge on the um, agglomerative learning and on the flat learning. And basically, if, you, if you're more confident with the uh, agglomerative learning, you want to you be above the diagonal uh, up until 0.5 and then below the diagonal. And a perfect thing would be to get to 0.5 and then go straight to uh, 1. Um, so you can see then in almost, almost throughout the entire agglomeration, um, the, agglomerate, the agglomeratively learned classifier um, is a lot more confident about the choices that it's making. Um, so that's also something um, good to know. Um, so now we do, um, I'll get into a bit of the coding. Um, so before we start, I want to do a disclaimer. And the, is that this is academic code. And so it's not going to be as clean as uh, maybe a lot of you would like. 
um, and I don't know if uh, you guys are aware of this thing, the Community Research and Academic Programming License, or CRAPL. Um, and this is a real thing, but it's not what my code is released on, but I, but I really get a huge kick about this thing. And so you, ha you have the number four is great. The documentation refers to the program. So that's definitely true in my case, for the most part. Um, OK. So I use a lot of the stuff that you guys have been talking about um, over the past few days, um, um, both uh, within the code itself and also in my development. Um, although I thought I knew IPython, but just coming here and seeing Fernando, I mean, you blew me away. Um, and so, yeah. So problem with NetworkX, which is what I based my entire graph thing on, is that um, the graph model they have is this dictionary uh, of dictionaries of dictionaries, and there might be another level in there. Um, and dictionaries in Python are really expensive, so my um, software needs a lot of RAM. Um, so that's something that I'm uh, wanting to fix. Um, although, to be fair, it's not all their fault, so I also uh, keep uh, an array of, a set of all the indices that belong to each node in the volume, and also features. Um, pre-computed in, in the node and on the edges. And so sets are also very memory intensive. Um, so also I'd be happy to discuss with if any of you have ideas on how to improve this. Um, and obviously I'm working to um, improve this all the time. Uh, so one of the designs that I um, really enjoyed getting into was this thing called a feature manager. Um, so what I did is that uh, some, fe some features are quite expensive to recompute from scratch. And like, if you want to take like, the mean probability over a boundary, um, that's well and good. It's O of n. But as your boundaries are growing, you're, you're retraversing the same nodes. Um, so it actually gives you O of n squared um, behavior. Um, so what I want to do is store things like the sums of um, the probabilities, the sums of the probability squared, and so on, all the moments. Um, on each node and edge uh, ahead of time. Um, and what I did was, you know, and basically each feature has its own separate cache. Um, and you want to um, encapsulate everything so that a feature and a cache, you know, are responsible for each other and you don't have to worry about using the right feature manager for the right uh, feature map. Um, so basically the, the object is a call and the call is the feature map. And also, it has a bunch of other calls like create node cache, uh, which will save it. And also, it tells you how to com uh, combine two node caches. So um, uh, one of our uh, collaborators created a convex hull feature. Um, and basically, to combine two convex hulls, you can just create, do the convex hull of the whole instead of doing the convex hull of the whole object, which might be a lot more expensive. Um, uh, it's also n-dimensional, um, and NumPy makes it very easy to abstract away the dimension. All we really need is to know what the neighbors are for a particular um, pixel. Um, so you just write a function to get neighbors in n-dimensions, and you, you know everything else is abstracted away. Um, also use a lot of the NumPy um, broadcasting tricks. Um, so um, instead of having just the probability of boundary, I also have um, pixel-wise probabilities of other things, like what's the probability that this is a mitochondrion, and so on. Um, we also have textons. So all of these I consider channels uh, in a map of the size of the image. Um, and things like the, the moment sums and stuff can be computed very easily for all the channels uh, simultaneously using NumPy broadcasting. Um, and it can be made very... Um, um, you know, you can abstract it away. There's only one line of code in here that would suggest to you that you can have more than one channel in A. Um, so A is actually n moments by n channels, but um, it, the code reads as if it's just n moments, um, thanks to broadcasting. Um, so what do I want in the future? This thing just completely garbled up my notes. Uh, one of the things is uh, 3D visualization. So I'll just um, switch out here um, to... Oh God. Okay, so right now for 3D viz, I basically output all my volumes uh, to VTK format, and then I use ITK snap, and it's really not a sustainable thing. Um, so if any of you guys um, you know, know a lot about uh, 3D plotting in Matplotlib, so I, this runs update 
mesh, and it, it, at least it's faster on my desktop, but um, it takes a long time, and there's going to be a 3D object that I can rotate and manipulate, so it's really useful for us to see the neurons in 3D and what's, what's going wrong, and obviously I'm not going to get to show you guys what a 3D neuron looks like. Am I fully out of time? Yes, I am. Um, okay. Well, also, I want to change the name, and if you guys have ideas, also talk to me. Um, so I want to thank uh, my advisor, uh, Ryan Kennedy, who did a lot of the work on natural image segmentation instead of electron microscopy. Uh, Steve Plaza is another big contributor. Um, Don and Bill don't contribute, uh, or haven't contributed to the code, but they're my big Python go-to guys in Genelia. And um, that's the FlyM team, which is, as you can see, huge. Thanks for listening.